Watch what Jesus says right here in this passage of scripture. And I want for you to come with me on this passage here. And let's see what Jesus says and what it is his heart reveals in this passage of scripture. Luke 10, verse number 30. Jesus, taking him up, replied, A certain man was going from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belongings and beat him and went their way, uncertainly leaving him half dead as it happened. Now, by coincidence, a certain priest was going down along that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. A Levite likewise came down to the place and saw him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he traveled along, came down to where he was, and when he saw him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity and sympathy for him and went to him and dressed his wounds, pouring on them oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Jesus then is going to ask the question, which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? And he answered, the one who showed pity and mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, go, go, go and do likewise see a lot of times especially in Christianity today people want to prove themselves by words not action or they want to justify themselves by words and not action but where is the fruit and the evidence of the confession and proclamation of what it is that we say we belong to if Jesus was moved by compassion and love, seeing the people without a shepherd and having compassion upon them, where and what are leaders today doing and why aren't they not doing likewise healing all who are sick and oppressed of the devil? So if someone's sick, they don't need to hear your cessationist doctrine and your Calvinist doctrine. They don't need to hear your denominational doctrine. They need a touch from Jesus. They don't need to hear why you're against the faith preachers and, and the revivalists upon the land. They need a touch from Jesus. When there's many people that need the Lord and all you have to give is information, all you got to give is just what it is you think everyone needs to learn and to know, but then yet these people need a touch from the Spirit of God in the Lord who is alive and living on the inside of those that proclaim and say they belong to Jesus. What then do you have if you say you belong to Christ? Is not Christ in you the hope of glory? Is not the Spirit of God in you alive and living? Or have you just come to salvation because you have a head knowledge and you've justified your own intellectual ways to make it seem as if everything is amazing and smooth. But in reality, is it? So people need a touch from Jesus. The question is this. Are you going to do it? Or do you really not have faith? Are you going to lay hands upon the sick so that they shall recover? It's written. So no matter what doctrine you try to justify your way out of and wiggle your way out of it just reveals your lack of faith 
Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So what are you greater than Jesus? You get to change the written word. Is, is he not your Lord and your master and your teacher in whom you should model after and follow? So you get to now change and water down the word and, and, and hide behind just your pulpit and, and, and that camera and, and, and you want to sit behind a desk speaking on a microphone. And then those that are out there actually laying hands upon people, you want to demonize? The devil is a lie. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Go around doing good, healing all. Lay hands upon people, y'all. It's not you. It's Christ in you. It's Jesus that needs to touch the hearts of his people to bring about a healing and his power to come nigh into their life. Where is the compassion? So you just want to sit in, you want to sit in front of somebody and just give them your denominational creed. You want to give them your ideologies and your man's methods and your psychologies and, 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 and your, your sola scripturas. As a lot of these heresy hunters always say, but if you're sola scripturas, where's the evidence of that reality known and modeled out as real and true? The spirit of God is not dead. But yet a lot of you read the word as if he is. A lot of you preachers upon the land, you, you, you got Jesus still in the tomb. As if he never raised from the dead, yet you quote it out of your mouth. But yet you don't believe the realities of the kingdom that the spirit of the Lord can move upon and through individuals to bring about miracles, signs and wonders. To bring healing to the brokenhearted. To set at liberty those that are oppressed of the devil. And not one time. In all the years of ministry, you know how to put together a cute little sermonette, but you've never cast out a devil in all. So, brothers and sisters, uh, there's some crazy things happening upon the land. And some of these individuals upon the land coming against God's people, those that actually believe the Bible and put feet to their faith and walk out the realities of the kingdom, Lord have mercy on, on their souls that judge people as they do. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Go to the word. Be led of the spirit, not had knowledge. The carnal mind is enmity with God. It will always create arguments to fight against the spirit of God moving. It will be according to the word, y'all. I'm not talking about the goofy stuff that's happening outside of the word. I'm talking about the miracle signs and wonders as of what it is that transpired and took place in the Bible. Jesus is alive. He's the same today as he was then. And he will always be the same forever. You don't get to dictate and say how the spirit of God can and will move. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name.